So let's go over the anatomy of a really important muscle called the occipital frontalis. Most people don't even know they have this muscle because it's actually underneath your hair. Now, Mickey was nice enough to uh, shave her head. Actually, just kidding, I got to swim half here. <laughs> now, this muscle has two bellies. One is the occipital region, it's the red area posteriorly, and the frontalis, at the front here, the red region. Now, this muscle is really quite interesting because when the frontal area contracts, it actually pulls the posterior forward, and when the posterior contracts, it pulls the anterior back. Now, why this muscle is so important is that when people have tension headaches or migraines, this whole area needs to be loosened up. Because if it isn't, quite often people will continue to have chronic problems. And what's really interesting, if we look at Chinese medicine, all the meridians actually converge on top of the head. So when you actually work on this area, and they actually hook electrodes in and measure brain activity, we'll find that we get a stabilizing of the cerebral cortex of the brain. At first we thought, okay, what can this possibly have to do with you know, uh, neurological function? But what is so interesting is the secondary effects this has when we actually loosen the area up. So let's talk about the attachments of the temporalis muscle. If we follow it completely around here, we'll see that the temporalis muscle attaches to the temporal fossa. And then we can follow it down, all the way down here, to the coronoid process and the anterior superior aspect of the ramus of the mandible. Now, in terms of the actual actions of the temporalis muscle, we'll see that it elevates and retracts the mandible at the temporal mandibular joints. So let's go over the palpation of the temporalis muscle. The easiest way to do this is to have your patient clench their jaw. Go ahead, Mickey, just clench your jaw. Yes, and right away it kind of bounces right underneath the pads of my fingers here. So I'll just go over the temporal fossa here. Go ahead and just alternate between clenching it and relax. Good. Go ahead, clench it, and you can keep going up until you find the very border of it. I'm still feeling it up here fairly mm -hmm. high. Clench it way up there. Yeah, and up. And I just get up into here, and this is where I kind of lose it a little bit there, but I come back down, and you can feel the, the borders of it. Now, once you locate it, just feel around for any type of hypertonicity. Go ahead and just contract, and I'll feel it there. Okay, you can feel that a bit there? Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you were to just take your hands here, and actually place them on here, just open your mouth, and you can really feel the stretch of that muscle kind of check. Uh -huh, yeah. And close. Good. Now, you can also actually do some palpation internally because we're not just in the fossa here. So let's just put a glove on and we'll do a little bit of palpation. The mandibular attachment of the temporalis is also palpated from inside the mouth. Obviously we're going to use either a finger cot or a glove and then we're going to reach posterior into the vestibule of the patient's mouth. Now this would be between the cheeks and the teeth. So I'm going to just open your mouth there and I'm just going to go between your teeth right up in here. Are you okay? Yeah. All right. And basically what we're doing is we're palpating on the anterior and medial surfaces of the coronoid process for the temporalis attachment. Is that pretty tender in there? Yeah. All right. Now you really have to be careful not to push too hard in there, but when you're in this area and you actually just gently move it back and forth, this is also a way of actually treating the attachment of the temporalis muscle. You okay? Yeah. Okay. So we just very gently just kind of palpate back and forth here. So let's talk about the lateral and medial pterygoids. We can see on the superior section here that we have the lateral pterygoid. Now there's a superior head and an inferior head. Now in terms of the attachments for the lateral pterygoid, we have the attachment from the sphenoid bone to the neck of the mandible and the capsule and the articular disc of the temporal mandibular joint. Now this is really interesting because you think that when you actually work on this structure, you're affecting the disc of the temporal mandibular joint. Now the actions of the lateral pterygoid is that it protracts and contralaterally deviates the mandible at the temporal mandibular joint. Below this here, we see the medial pterygoid. 
Now, the attachments of the medial pterygoid is it attaches to the sphenoid and maxillary bones to the internal surface of the mandible, down below here, at the angle of the mandible and inferior aspect of the ramus. The actions of the medial pterygoid is that it elevates, protracts, and contralaterally deviates the mandible at the temporal mandibular joints. So let's go over palpation of the lateral pterygoid. So again, we'll put on either a finger cot or a glove. I'll have you open your mouth, Mickey, and I'm gonna actually go on the upper teeth Follow it all the way back to the molars, in between the gum, and to a little depression there, which is posterior and superior. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, just laterally deviate your teeth a little bit, your jaw going down a little bit. Okay. Did that actually take some pressure off there? Yeah. Okay. It's a pretty sensitive area, so just be careful here. Mm -hmm. Now, if I just move my hand in that little depression at the end here, it's going to be pretty tender. Yeah. Now, if you move your jaw towards center and then back lateral again, that's enough, more than enough. And back to there. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. And actually, while you're palpating the area, this will also release the muscle. And why this is so important is because when you have a trigger point or restriction in the lateral pterygoid, people often confuse this with temporomandibular joint problems or sinusitis or actually a toothache even. So this is actually quite effective for a number of situations that are commonly misdiagnosed. So let's go over palpation of the medial pterygoid. Now, again, you're going to use a glove or a finger cot. And what you're going to do is basically follow the lower teeth this time. So Mickey, open your mouth there. And I'm gonna follow the inside of the lower teeth. And I'm going to go right past there, and then I'm going to go a little bit posterior and lateral. Are you okay? Uh -huh. Good. Now, that will be the position. Now, what you need to do with the patient is get them used to actually retracting and protracting the jaw. So, make you open your mouth and take your teeth and take it out so the lower teeth are over the upper teeth. Good. And that's protracting. And bring it back one more time. Good. Now, we're going to do this while we actually palpate. Now, open your mouth again, and I'm going to follow the inside of the teeth, basically right to the end, past the molars, and posterior lateral. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to try and protract your teeth just a little bit. That's enough, more than enough. Take it back. And again, take it out and back. One more time, out and back. Good. Now, while I'm doing this, you can actually feel for hypertonicity of that muscle. And while you're palpating, it actually helps to loosen that muscle. So consider this both a treatment and palpation. There's one other area you'll need to palpate, and that's from the external surface. Now, what we'll do here is actually palpate underneath the jaw. And what I'll do, Mickey, is actually have you take your jaw and just take your teeth and just sort of just cause a little compression there. Open wide and take it in, good. And as you contract the jaw there, I can actually feel the muscle start, the belly of the muscle start to contract a little bit right here mm -hmm. in this area. Feel that right there? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And I'm just gonna go back and forth and relax and contract. So while I'm performing this action, the muscle itself will relax and if there's any hypertonicity in the muscle, it will start to release. So again, this is both palpation and treatment. So let's go over the masseter muscle. Now, the masseter muscle's origin is the zygomatic arch and the maxillary process of the zygomatic bone. It inserts on the outer surface of the mandible, or the ramus of the mandible, or on the angle of the mandible down here. Now, this is a really interesting muscle. The masseter muscle helps us chew, is a powerful muscle that lies obliquely on the outside of the jaw. It has a quadrilangular shape and is anchored along the lower edge of the zygomatic arch. The masseter inserts into most of the outer surface of the ramus, down here, of the mandible. The masseter has a superficial portion and also a deep portion. The superficial portion 
flushes out the side of the face and basically forms the surface of the side of the face. The masseter ripples and bulges under the skin when someone chews or clenches their teeth. So just clench your teeth there a little bit there, Mickey? Yeah, you can basically see it start to protrude there. Now, in terms of the actions of the masseter, the masseter is the main muscle, or the prime mover, involved in closing the jaw, or in anatomical terms, elevating the mandible. After the mouth has opened and the jaw drops, this muscle lifts the mandible back into its neutral position. It also helps to protract the jaw and to clench the teeth, which occurs both in chewing and also when a person is feeling emotional tension. So quite often you'll see people when they're under a lot of stress, uh, these muscles are really tight and contracted and hypertonic. So let's go over palpation of the masseter muscle. Now, superficially, it's very easy to palpate. So if we just go on the outside here and have the patient clench their teeth, go ahead, Mickey, just clench, and you can actually feel it contract there. So right up to the zygomatic arch, down right to the mandible there. Yes, good, again. Yeah, it's very, very easy to palpate here. Okay, and at the same time, you can also actually put your hands on the muscle here. Just open your mouth there, and you can feel that stretch in there. Good, and close. Open again, you can feel the stretch of the muscle underneath there and close. Very easy to palpate and you can also feel that there's sections of hypertonicity. And individuals under a lot of stress, you're going to feel certain points, certain trigger points, which are going to be very, very sensitive. Now, we can also palpate this muscle internally. So let's go over the internal palpation of the masseter muscle. So basically put on a glove or a finger cot, open your mouth, Mickey, and just go on the cheek here, good, and I'm going to get you to just clench your teeth together there. Good, and, and right away you can feel it kind of pop up under the finger here. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Relax there. Now, just clench a little bit, not too much. Okay, <laughs> yeah, and you can actually just take your thumb and your index finger and roll back and forth here. Open it a little bit and go back and clench it again. Good, and you can actually feel certain areas of hypertonicity. Let me move up there a little bit. Right there, that's really tight. Mm -hmm. And clench a little bit there and just sort of roll back and forth. So the actual palpating of the masseter internally, again, is also a form of treatment. And this is a great way to actually alleviate tension of the jaw. So as we're going through here, we want to go through each section. We want to make sure that we're getting on the medial and lateral pterygoids. We want to be getting on the temporalis and the masseter. These are all really, really important areas.